Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the studio, and welcome to another episode of Cigar Short Videos. I am Rob, and thank God it's good to see you across from the table from me, sir. Oh, it's uh, been a while, man. How's it going? It's going well. Good, man. Good, good, good. Can't complain when doing good. Right. Um, I'm pretty bummed out. I'm pretty bummed out on Norm McDonald's passing. He was, was hilarious. Dude, he was so dry and so like spot on. Always. always his timing was awesome. Always. I mean, he was he was hilarious, and so we lost him. He had a long battle of cancer, I believe, and uh, it finally caught up with him. So unfortunately, uh, I mean, he's a funny dude. He'll be missed. Him playing Burt Reynolds on SNL. Yeah, dang it. Yeah, <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> That's so good. That was good. <laughs> and I always like the Sean Connery character. That's good too. Yeah. So. But yeah, man, uh, you know, rest in peace, Norm. We're going to miss you. Speaking of comedy shows, I know for one out for my dad, Normie. Uh, speaking of comedy shows, we had our comedy show the other night over at Dark Side to raise money for the Alzheimer's awareness. And it went really well, man. It went well. So I think we had about 45 people show up. And, uh, I didn't get any rotten food or beer poured on me, thrown at me, nothing like that. So that's always a plus. I guess it was I was tolerable. Uh, well, I watched it after you showed me where it was at on Facebook, and those were I mean, those were some great guys, man. Y'all yeah. did a great job. We did. We pulled it together, yeah, like, really quick. So, but I have to thank John Dan, uh, John Dan Timo uh, knows most of those guys, so he was able to help us pull some folks in, some talent in, and uh, of course Ed. Ed's Ed's funny motherfucker, dude. He's just yes. funny. So. I really hate it that Ed missed this episode uh, because this one is right up his alley. So we'd be in stitches. But we are going to, uh, we're going to carry on. Ed had to, I think we got a little shorthanded at work, and so he had to go in and fill out some of shit. So, yeah. So, Ed, we're thinking about you, man. It's turned into like love lines. Love lines. Big Daddy Wolf comes back. Why is that my voice? Being sexual. What color of pants are you wearing? <laughs> I'm wearing crotch with Spider-Man pajamas. I'll be sitting over here with this jar of peanut butter and Peppy, my pug. We're gonna we're gonna Netflix and chill. <laughs> he just gonna keep licking to that peanut butter gum. <laughs> I mean, is it wrong? Is it wrong? If you close your eyes. <laughs> well, uh, that sounds bizarre, but probably not as bizarre as the story I'm about to tell you because it is time. for today's What the Florida. And today's What the Florida, we are coming to you from Miami. It's so good. It's we so good to promote it twice. So get out of here. Okay, all right. We gotta hire a monkey to match the buttons for me. He's gotta be better than me. <laughs> I mean, seriously, gotta be better than me. Uh, an alleged Florida foot sniffer is arrested. Foot sniff? I mean, you just can't have a good time anymore. I don't get people's attraction to other folks' feet. I don't either. I don't even like to look at my own. So, uh, police say they've arrested a man days after complaint that someone was spotted crawling under library tables and smelling feet at Florida International University. Okay. Is that the Rattlers? Uh, is it? it? Is it? Yeah, it, I think it might be. It is. All right. Y'all, 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 fact checkers on that. I'm gonna. <laughs> Miami Dade Police. How many stories have we done from Miami Dade? You know that them guys are sitting in the car, and they, every time it comes across the radio, they're like, "Roll the dice, let's yeah. see what we got." Today. Yeah, it's like a. <laughs> it literally is an eight ball with a bunch of dumb shit in it. They just shake it up and they be like, "Oh, a sniffer, <laughs> let's roll." A methamphetamine-induced uh, rattlesnake. <laughs> so. Um, Miami Dade Police say 52 year old Eddie Wan was arrested Tuesday and charged with violation of a sex offender, fleeing and eluding police, reckless driving, aggravated assault, and resisting without violence. How do you resist without violence? Resist, resist, maybe. Resist means you gotta, yeah, I don't know how they did it. <laughs> they maybe told him to stop. They maybe did. Maybe they were afraid to touch him. I wouldn't. Uh, FIU police had previously released a notice warning students that a man was spotted under a table at a campus library August 29th, along with a description and a photo. Authorities said the man was matching the description was spotted Tuesday on a scooter several miles from the campus. Officers attempted to uh, uh, 
stop him at a traffic stop, but the man fled. Eventually, he cra had crashed and was arrested. It didn't say high speed, not on the speeder. I'm no, they, they kind of had to rule a high speed chase out. So uh, I need a road bike for a scooter. They probably had one of those. Call the choppers. It was, a, it was a campus bike cop probably chased him down. So On his up feet. <laughs> I mean, he was he was like a what a wish a, what is a wish list Ted Bundy, if you will. He uh, he just was there sniffing feet in the uh, university libraries. He wasn't actually there to kill anybody. So I want to see the tables because it's not like you can secretly get under one and then not notice. What do you do though? Like, I mean, you're just sitting there minding your own business and you be here. You 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 put something <laughs> on your foot and you look and there's like nobody sitting across from you. And then you're like, what is that? And you look down and fucking Ed Wine is down there sniffing between your toes. Eddie, get off my shoes, son. Eddie, what is? what are you doing? I told you the first time was free. <laughs> hey, apparently weirdos, there, there's so many weirdos in the world. And my very first job I had, I worked at Chick-fil-A. And uh, we had a dude working with us. And uh, I won't say his name. But... Uh, he was he we had just hired him and he was like really religious and he was telling us about all these great things that he had done with the church and which is a dead giveaway that somebody usually is a real piece of shit uh if, they, if they're coming at you hard like that um and i was right he was a real piece of shit because he was up front we were taking people's orders it was during lunch and one of our we were inside of a mall so one of our main customers that worked at belt she always came up at lunch all the time so she came up and she stops and she looks at that guy and she looks at me and she goes is that guy working here? And I was like, yeah, we just hired him. She was like, where's your manager? And I said, he's upstairs. Well, let me know, get him for you. Because I had to, I was dying to know what was about to get said. And uh, sure enough, the guy had been kicked out of Belk. Was it Belk or Profit? I can't remember. He was kicked out and uh, arrested because he was going into the women's dressing rooms and looking underneath the stalls and jerking off. Oh, it's <laughs> trifecta. But he got a job at Chick-fil-A. No background check back then. No, it was a, it was a come as you are. Just don't come on the waffle fries. <laughs> so, keep my nuggets out of your butthole. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. This is now uh, this, this episode's explicit. It's so, especially off the rails early. It's yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, if that couldn't get any stranger, you know, we uncovered a story not too long ago about uh, the activity of dolphins disturbing uh, of a creature that is. Well, would you believe that in the 60s the CIA and NASA funded a project uh, and we'll just call it the dolphin who loved me. Not the spy that shagged me or nothing like that. Uh, we're going a key point to this story. <laughs> there was LSD involved. There was LSD and dolphin sex, if you will. And it wasn't dolphin on dolphin sex. So let's dig into this. Let's go ahead and dig in. So there was a 23-year-old lady named Margaret Howe Lavat. Who was not hard to look at. No, let me go ahead and say that. She was asked to teach the English language to a male dolphin. Oh, yeah? On the surface, nothing out of the ordinary. Yeah. yeah. Especially in the 60s, we're trying to teach everybody to speak our language. Right. Well, it just so happened that there was a man named Dr. John C. Lilly in 1961 who wrote a science fiction novel named Man and Dolphin. And somehow he convinces a laboratory to establish a lab named Dolphin Point. And it was equipped with a pool for three dolphins and a workspace for training and research. The lab attracted the attention of Margaret. Margaret. Margaret comes on in. She's going to teach the dolphin English. Because, hey, the dolphin's brain's 40% bigger than a human brain. And dolphin have human responses to pain and anger mm -hmm. and can understand the language to a fair degree. So, hey, it's right up her alley. And the director, Gregory Bateson, said that she was going to be appointed as the lead teacher. So, still, nothing out of the ordinary. The Dolphin House Yet. was flush with seawater to enable Margaret to live with the male dolphin, Peter, and two female dolphins. They named these dolphins Peter. Peter. 
<laughs> Charles, just hang on. It gets worse. Yeah, yeah. Charles, <laughs> I got a feeling we're going to wear that one out. <laughs> the water on the first floor was shallow and uh, convenient for the interface between Peter, the other dolphins, and the lady, Margaret. Mm -hmm. There was a desk hanging from the ceiling that was dry so that she could keep her stuff on. And then there was a hanging mattress surrounded by shower curtains where she could rest. And uh, I'm trying to get a, vi a visual. I want to know how they convinced her that she's got to live in there. Was she the one taking LSD? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so, Margaret. That explains a whole lot. A lot. And I, I stopped myself, but I'll go ahead and just say it because it, it ties in. Margaret whacks off her hair. <laughs> and all she's whacking off. <laughs> because she's living in a. <laughs> She's living in a semi-aquatic environment. <laughs> oh, she's living on canned food. It's like a terrarium of debauchery. She's in there for 24 hours a day for 10 weeks. Yeah. How does she keep her? But she's on LSD and canned food. Yeah. I mean, I bet there's SpaghettiOs everywhere. <laughs> there was, dude. There's all kinds of damn artwork on SpaghettiOs and feces, probably. So the dolphin was trained to mimic a given set of human sounds, mm -hmm. and Margaret taught the dolphin, Peter, to greet her with the sound of, hello, Margaret. <laughs> hello, Margaret. Sounding, is that a Conway Twitty song? Oh, it's darling. Hello, it's darling. <laughs> Sounding M was not easy for Peter. Cause he's a fucking he's dolphin. He's a fucking dolphin. <laughs> he doesn't have lips. Now, here's what's even worse. Margaret painted her face white and her lips black so that her lip movement could be seen by him and he could maneuver his blowhole accordingly to mimic a sound. Peter worked hard to get that M sound. He did. He was, uh, he was, Pete, calm down, Peter. So dedicated was Margaret. Margaret. <laughs> That's cool, what have it. And the dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> they had a mutual admiration and finally love sets in. It happened. But there was some sexual overtones. There was. Now, Margaret emphasized that the attraction was one sided from Peter to her and she was not as sexually attracted. To she him. just friend zoned him basically. Yeah. <laughs> so they ate, lived, and played together. Played together. And gradually, Peter decided that he wasn't going to be obedient and turned adventurous mm -hmm. and naughty. No. He's had enough of this cock teasing. <laughs> We're going to move this relationship to another level. So when she would say, all right, it's time to work, he would counter with, no, it's time to play. And Margaret rested on her hanging mattress. Peter would swim around and splash water on the shower curtains, calling her down for company. They played together as a routine in the morning at 10 a.m., but Peter decided more playtime at 12 and 3 was in order. He was fed a fish diet. That sounds like a weekend at my house when the kids are gone. Now, to play, she would throw the ball and towels, which the dolphin would bring back and chase around. Peter got hooked on watching TV with Margaret and was making progress in his language skills. So we're just looking at, this is the beginning stages of Netflix and chill. Mm -hmm. So he's six years old and he's in his sexual prime. Yeah, of course, of course. He loved rubbing on Margaret and biting her toes generally, gently. <laughs> Oh, he would, at times, during the middle of the night, yell, Hey! <laughs> and throw water on her bed, forcing her to get up early to feed him. And if she didn't touch him, he would sulk, and he would yell as she tried to start the lesson. So he's yelling at her as he's, she's trying to teach him how to say words. This thing ain't gonna beat itself! He could say ball a lot. <laughs> and he felt annoyed when Margaret was on the phone and she ignored him. That sounds a lot like my house too. Except I'm using one on my phone. So the female the two female dolphins, 
I guess are in season, and Peter's like, nope, no interest here. I'm going to play with my ball, and I'm going to hug them toes. That's right. So, so Margaret had kind of the, the way she looked at it was, it was like an itch that needed to be scratched. That, that, was, that they couldn't get anything productive done until she uh, gave Peter's Peter a little attention. So He would roll over and put his belly and his genitals on her until she fondled him. Until she fondled him. How about you just keep saying no like a dog when he gets up? Yeah. And I'm not touching you pee pee, Peter. Yeah. I, I think... Oh, and they also, this is even more bizarre. They also said that it was never done alone. It wasn't anything um, perverted about it. That she would do it to, she would uh, jerk the dolphin off in front of people so it didn't seem awkward. I'm sorry. Jerking a dolphin off for getting awkward. I don't doing care how many people's in a room. It's still <laughs> awkward jerking off a dolphin. It's awkward. Just the news flash there. She says that she was told that if she didn't masturbate the dolphin, she would lose her job. I've been like, fire my ass. I mean, is that, is there a, I want to see the HR handbook when it comes to sexual misconduct. How can you, t how can you, t how many, how can you tell somebody, yeah, we're going to, if you don't jerk this dolphin off, we're going to fire you. You're going to lose your job. I, I'm at a loss for words, to be, to be honest with you. I mean, that don't even, none of it makes sense until you start talking about LSD. And then it's like, it all kind of starts making sense. So, the way it is reported through a veterinarian doctor, six weeks into the 10 week thing, Peter decides that jerking the gherkin is not what he needs and he commits suicide. He does. It, well, the, the project was coming to an end, and so she stopped having re relation like relations with this animal, and she she left she left the uh, the living quarters if you will she stopped staying with the dolphin, uh, and he became so depressed that he wouldn't eat, and he got to <laughs> in such a dire situation that he swam to the bottom of the tank and drowned himself. He wouldn't even have sex with the females, and they tried to introduce yeah. even more females. Yeah. So this lady, who has fulfilled her duty, her job, um, we should have tried to get her for an interview. Is <laughs> she still alive? I don't know. I mean, I don't even know anybody that could get her any LSD, but I'm pretty sure she'd be down for it. I mean, if she's down for jerking off a dolphin, She's probably down with uh, doing a podcast about jerking off dolphin. I don't know. So, again, she's she she looks at it as an itch that needed to be scratched. Yeah, that's the way it's reported. That she just I, I still it doesn't go into, and I don't guess she's ever let it out. What? At what point during your job do you think, okay, this dolphin's rolling over, I should just reach down there and rub one out for him? That's you're teaching him English. Yeah. Not not sex, sex. education. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it just every single bit of it. And and if you look at these pictures and I'll post some of them on our social media, um, it is the most bizarre setup that I have ever seen. I mean, you got this lady, she's sitting there, you know, She's got on a, a black, looks like a black sweater and a white skirt sitting in a chair that's in the water, and she's on the phone at a desk in the water, and this dolphin's like at her feet going, again, you ain't going to be yourself. Get off that phone. I need you down here. <laughs> Do you want me to say a word? How about, what does this sound like? That means rub it. That means rub it. If you hear that noise come out of my, what do they have? Blowhole. Blowhole, that means rub it. This ball is not doing it. I bet he's over there hunching that ball too in the towels. I wonder what else he hunched. I, I mean, wonder if it just it said stopped that, with the, No, it said that in the article that I read that he would, 
it started off with him gently biting her toes, so he had a foot fetish. He needs to move mm -hmm. to Miami Dade. Yep, he would rub his, he would rub himself on her knee or her feet or my hand because he realized that the knee and the foot could be grabbed. So definitely needed to work it, work it to the hand. He moved up from the foot and the knee to her thigh where her hand would rest, and then figured out the, like you said, the hand can grip. GI Joe Kung Fu grip. She said uh, it was a precious thing, which she always carried out with great respect. This lady is fucking crazy. Uh, Peter was was right there, and he knew I was right there. She continued, "It wasn't sexual on my part, sensuous perhaps. It seemed to be, <laughs> no, yeah, hold on. It seemed to be that it made the bond closer." Well, duh! Not because of the sexual activity, but because of the lack of having to keep breaking. So they had to take a break every time he's like getting on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and that's all it really was. I was there to get to know Peter, and that was part of Peter. Peter's Peter. So, um, in, uh, innocent as they were, Lovell's. Uh, Sexual encounters with Peter would ultimately overshadow the whole exper experiment when a story of them appeared in Hustler magazine in the late seventies. You know Larry Flynn had a field day with that. Hey, are you on for Larry rubbing that Peter? I don't know if you're talking. I just wrote that story all the way, talking a dolphin. I was just, that guy. That dolphin said he was, that, that Peter wasn't going to rub it simple out here. He don't care about some dumb sounds. You know he was trying to get in there with some cameras. Like he's like, he's can y'all outfit this wheelchair? Throwing, <laughs> throwing money at that program, at that program left and right, get in there with a the camera. Yeah, Lovell says, uh, I think there were two magazine stories on an island at the time, and I went and looked at one, and I found uh, found another story with my name and Peter and a drawing. Uh, she bought up all the copies she could uh, without them being circulated because it was a bit uncomfortable. The worst experiment in the world I read somewhere was me and Peter, and that's just fine. I don't mind. But that's not the point of it, nor the result of it, so I just ignored it. What was the result, Margaret? <laughs> what was the result? You had blisters on your hand? <laughs> she was carrying a half human, half dolphin baby in her. He was born with flippers and a gnarly bull. Um, uh, something else being interrupted, uh, in, hold on, uh, something else can be interrupted. The study Lily also uh, had begun researching the mind altering powers of LSD uh, in the early 60s. Wife of Ivan Torres, the producer of the Dolphin movie Flipper, had first introduced him <laughs> to it at a party. John and Ivan Torres were really good friends, says Rick O'Berry of the Dolphin Project. Um, there you go. Uh, and a friend of Lily's at the time. Ivan was financing some of the work on St. Thomas. I saw John go from a scientist with a white coat to a full-blown hippie. Her name was former actors Jeff Bridges, who was introduced to Lily by his father Lloyd. Lily's self-experiment with LSD was just a part of who he was. Uh, John and Lily was also an explorer of the brain and the mind, and those drugs expanded our uh, consciousness, uh, reflects bridges, and that's what he's saying. There were many, uh, there were too many uh, people with his expertise and scientific background doing all kinds of work like that. In the 1960s, a small section of the neuro, uh, neuroscience like John Lilly were licensed to research LSD by the American government convinced that the drug had medical qualities and should be used in treating mental health patients, such as the lady who jerks off dolphins in a pond. Well, here's my thing. Whoever is at the CIA in the 60s, it, I think they're sitting there like on this big throne and they're smoking weed and they're like, dude. They're dude. smoking weed laced with angel dust. Yeah. And I, alien, alien fucking skin folks. I don't know. I bet. I can get a woman to jerk a dolphin off. And they're like, no, man, ain't no way. And he goes, yep, LSD. And they're like, shit. And then, I swear, I think the guys in the CIA at the time were like the aliens that abduct people, and they just like, oh, they, let's see what this does. Yeah, let's, yeah, they were probing folks. I believe I believe you, you may be on something there. We probably shouldn't talk about it any further, because we're going to disappear. Uh, John Lilly was annoyed, so nothing happened when he... Uh, he subjected the dolphins to the LSD. Uh, it's just different species has different reactions. Uh, and, 
for the simple fact that it tranquilizes me for horses my induced a state of excitement for a dog. Playing with pharmaceuticals is a tricky business to say the least, especially when you're dealing with animals. So the dolphin, they would inject the dolphins with LSD. Um, uh, they just had no effect on them. Uh, the, the LSD had no effect on the dolphin. But obviously it made Peter horny. It, it, made, it had an effect on a lady who didn't mind jerking the dolphin off. I wonder if she saw cool shapes and colors while she was jerking. <laughs> Man, I don't know. But uh, by autumn 1966, John, in John Lilly's interest in speaking dolphin experiment was dwindling. It didn't have the zing to it as the LSA, LSD did at that time. Uh, recalls love it of Lilly's attitude towards her uh, progress with Peter, and at the end, the zing worn out. There's so many. I'm gonna. I'm totally gonna get these pictures pulled up, and we'll get them on the social media. Um, Lily's cavalier attitude towards the dolphins' welfare would eventually be his downfall, driving away the last director, Gregory uh, Bateson. Oh, so John Lily's cavalier attitude made Gregory Bateson say, "I don't want to be a part of this anymore." Not the woman. Not the lady having sex with a dolphin, living with it for ten weeks, twenty-four-seven. For ten weeks and painting her face and white, painting her face white and her lips black. That doesn't that that's a, that's okay. That's normal. Yeah, that's fine. That's just normal activity, normal behavior. That's how we teach English. That's how we do it in the public schools. Uh, at the Miami the Miami lab, held captive in small tanks with little or no sunlight, Peter began deteriorating quickly. After a few after a few weeks of Lovett's uh, received news, uh, I got the phone call from John Lilly. She recalls. John called me uh, himself to tell me, he said, Peter has committed suicide. Hey, that dolphin went down there and drowned himself. What the hell are we going to do now? <laughs> maybe, he, maybe he committed suicide because he didn't have any more drugs or a lady to, to satisfy his sexual urges. What else did he have to live for? The two, He's just swimming in a fucking circle. The two female dolphins can't rub it like she does. No, they don't have opposable thumbs. He didn't have anything to do with that. He might have been better off throwing a G.I. Joe doll down in there and uh, seeing if he could get anything done with it. So, <laughs> oh my God. Rick O'Berry collaborates the use of uh, this word. Dolphins are not automatic air breathers like we are, he explains. Every breath is a conscious effort. So if life becomes too unbearable, the dolphin just takes a breath and then they sink to the bottom. They do not take the next breath. Uh, Margaret could rationalize it, but she was left... Uh, you know, here's a great love of his life, and he's and she's gone. Uh, was Peter's? They are saying was Peter's pro thought process. The great love. I mean, it's like Ed said on the previous episode when we talked about we touched on this. Uh, he that's the last time he's gonna get a piece of human ass. What else is left for him? He reached the pinnacle. He reached everything's down. There's deal. nothing left for him to do. No. Have you ever? <laughs> okay. You were a kid, and you would just like exhale all the air out of your lungs, and you just sink in a pool just to see, you know. That's what that's what the dolphin did. He just said, <sighs> and he didn't come back up. Unlike us, he didn't have that natural reflex to breathe. He did not. But if he was born with opposable thumbs, we would have never known about Margaret. He probably would have said, hey, "You know what? I got. It. I'm coming back. I'm coming." Hey girls, hey girl dolphins, come over here. Oh man, there's still a prejudice that humans have a language which is uh, far and away above any species, uh, said. But the complexity of the relationship between dolphin signals to each other, we discovered that they definitely have a higher communication, higher uh, communication intelligence. Um, actually, I don't have any intelligence, as you can tell by the way I'm trying to read this article. Um, I think Lily's. Big insight was how intelligent dolphins really are. I think you could have figured all that out without the whole uh, jerking, jerking the yeah, the masturbating the dolphin. I don't think that the CIA went from jerking the dolphin off to thinking, hey, we can get them to guard that base down there. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. They're gonna teach them to be like under. It's like what did Aquaman do? Yeah, he's got all the sea animals doing all this shit to protect. Atlantis. There's that, uh, there's a, a military base. It's either in Florida or. It's gotta be Florida. It's gotta be. It's gotta be. It's gotta be. Or in the Caribbean. But basically, they've trained these dolphins to 
they've got this like steel net around this perimeter so the subs can come in and out. But the dolphins patrol it like security and will attack anything and just beat it dead yeah. with their nose. Yeah. Let's 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 go back to the CIA setting somewhere <laughs> doing some serious hard drugs, hallucinating. Them. It Look, reminds me of the basement of that 70s show. Somebody fucking read an Aquaman comic book and they're like, you know what? I bet if we give these motherfuckers LSD, they'll build a war for us. They're all like, no, nah, man. They're, they're like, nah, this LSD ain't working. Hey, get that chick to jerk that dolphin off and see if he'll start You know that white painted it. face yeah. with a black lips. Paint that bitch's face white, get her some white lips, black lips, and send her down. Cut her hair off. If you want to keep your job, <laughs> you're going to leave it. You will. I'd have been like, oh, no. Yeah. What else are you gonna fall back on, honey? Nothing. How are you gonna put that on the resume? <laughs> <laughs> At what point is that gonna help you get the next job? So it says here. How fast can you type? Well, I can jerk a dolphin off no, in no, 36 no. seconds. I got one even better. How fast can you roll that burrito? <laughs> this was way before. What love. kind of experience do you have? Well, I used to jerk off dolphins. You're hired. Jared Fogel. <laughs> hired. <laughs> I wonder if she's got anything to do with the Chipotle chain. If she don't, she's missed she, her calling. She missed her calling. She did. She did. Churros and burritos. <laughs> she's working at something. She's carniceria. <laughs> Rolling out. Yes. Yeah. Like in hiding. She's in hiding. I wonder if she still paints her lips black for shits and giggles. She's like a, a clown that's depressed. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's like. She's like a depressed clown, like a sad clown. She's just like painting her face with black lips. I remember Less than 60s. We can, uh, we can go ahead, and I'll tell you, you know, we covered some odd behavior of some, some animals in a previous episode. And uh, I can give you a little, a little bit more back information on a dolphin that y'all researched. We already talked about how they would find a female that was ready to mate and a whole pod of male dolphins would circle it and basically gang rape this female dolphin for days, for days, for days, like four days. And so for him to like just exclude two female dolphins that were in season, what really was going on in that tank? There was more than hand jobs. Oh yeah, you know she's just fingering his blow. <laughs> 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 she can't eat his ass but she can talk <laughs> punch his his punch his <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder what sound it makes when she tongue punches the I think it's sounds like <laughs> I know uh, and he arches his back <laughs> oh god so another thing that I know that, uh, that dolphins do is they will rip the heads off of certain fish in the ocean and they will use that for uh, copulation. A fleshlight. Uh, if you if you know what a fleshlight is, if you if don't, you're, if you're underage, don't Google that. If you but don't, you, take a Pringles can, <laughs> two sponges, <laughs> and a surgical pole. <laughs> is that like a foofy in prison? <laughs> what you gonna do with that great jelly? <laughs> that great jelly. Uh, nothing. You can have it. <laughs> but uh, so they would they would use decapitated fish in the ocean for. Uh, sexual gratification okay well if it keeps from gang raping female dolphins i guess let them eat the heads off of them yeah they eat fish heads they uh, they are they are some pretty damn brutal animals yes they, they are. really are they really are yeah so when you swim with the dolphin and you feel something touch your calf they not do they not their fingers they're not there they don't have opposable thumbs it's a it's a dolphin penis and it's so funny like people's like oh I'm gonna go swim with the dolphins. I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna let it hug me. I'm gonna hug the dolphin, and that thing's going to town on them. You and know people are laughing. And I'm like, oh, dude, <laughs> you better be glad somebody's there to pull that thing off of you. <laughs> You'd have a raw spot. There, there's like five more waiting their turn. You know. Hey man, Jimmy's getting it right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey Peter, tell us about that time we hey, that tank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're doing, this was for you, Peter. <laughs> 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 this is we have gone off the rails. So give me, give me a quick assessment of uh, what you take away from this story. What, what, what do you take away from this episode? I want to know what she was on before she took the job. I want to know what she got paid. 
Well, that too. Because it had to, had be, to be stupid money in the 60s. Like, it had to be something stupid. Yeah, I mean, so in the 60s, you could buy a car for under a grand. So she's probably making 70, 60, 70 thousand dollars in the 60s. Hell, she may have been making a hundred thousand. She could have been for ten weeks that you had to live and eat canned food. Well, I mean, I was looking at it. <laughs> don't pay what it used to, boys. <laughs> Jerking off dolphins don't pay what it used to. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to supply my crap. I'm right trying there. to provide for my family. Honey, I'm gonna be gone for ten weeks in a semi aquatic Can you imagine selling that to your spouse? What How much you getting paid? So what the first? Or if your wife doing? comes to you, and she's hell, like, no, I gotta go teach English to a dolphin. Hell, no, no you're, you're not. not. I read I a story once. What you gonna do? I know what's gonna happen. <laughs> you ain't going to work in no damn, damn dolphin park. Keep your tongue out of that blowhole. I guarantee you, your ass is gonna come home to an empty house. And I'm getting half. <laughs> I wonder how many times Margaret had plushy dolphin sent to her house. <laughs> Dude, I'd be that bastard. I would, I, would be, I would be mailing all kinds of nonsense to her. The house. Beanie Baby Dolphins. I'd be. How many you got? Yeah, Can I get a case? Yeah. I mean, 144. I'm gonna send one, one every other week. That's to right. Her house. <laughs> God, I'm out of here. Well, man, I, I don't even know uh, where we can only go up from here <laughs> we after reached, this episode. Just like Peter, we reached the bottom. We held on. I have, I have literally exhaled, and I'm in the bottom of the tank right now after that. So. I never laughed so hard in my life. <laughs> uh, man, my man, face hurts. I, uh, <laughs> I, I really uh, was, I was really ready to do this episode. Uh, we just had to find time to do it. So, man, I appreciate you getting in here and letting me knock it out. Uh, we knocked it out. I, I appreciate you letting us rub this one out. I mean, <laughs> knock this one out. <laughs> All right, everybody. Behave yourself. Big Ed, DJ.